welcome to a new video. Today I've got something quite exciting to talk to you about and this is the watercolour advent calendar by Chminke, I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure, I'm really sorry if I said that wrong. I got this yesterday. I first heard about it on Hello Alice's Twitter. She mentioned that she bought one and I thought, oh, it's probably just something you have to buy from America so it'll cost a fortune. And then she said she bought it from the UK. So then I had to look into it and it wasn't actually that expensive considering. It was, on its own, it was 49.99. This was on the SAA website. But if you spent 30 pounds on other things, you got this for 29.99. And I was buying some ink and masking fluid and not very exciting things at the same time. So I just decided that I would give this a go as well because also I worked out that it worked at a cheaper price. I worked out that it worked out. Yeah, I went to bed at quarter to three in the morning, so I'm really sorry guys. Um, yeah, I worked out that it was cheaper than buying 24 half pans as a set, because usually you think advent calendars are more expensive because they've got a box and they make it look fancy. But yeah, it worked out cheaper than buying the set and I've been wanting to try these watercolors for a while, so I thought I would give it a go. So yeah, here it is. I'm not fitting it in the shop very well. Um, so it's quite pretty. It's got this, obviously, watercolor kind of pattern. Um, and then it's got this nice foil text on it, like that. And then on the back it says, Fine Artist Watercolours, I can't read backwards, uh, 24 colours, a complete beginner's assortment, artist pigments in high concentration, fully reusable paint when dried on a palette, good control of paint flow and cadmium free colours. These are the Horodam Aquarelle, which I believe are their student grade paints. I didn't expect them to put the artist grade ones in. And then there's 23 half pans and one large pan. So yeah, um, like I said, I've been wanting to try these ones, so I'm really excited to give them a go. So I'm thinking I'm probably not going to do a painting for every single colour, but I'm thinking of maybe doing a few little paintings, one of each uh, of the colours I get out of the windows, and then I can show you guys some of them in this video. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. I am going to open this up. And then because it is the 1st of December today, as I film this, I'm gonna see what's inside the first door or window, whatever you want to call it. This might not be for a few years, because um, I can't actually get this open. Now, unless you guys are here for ASMR, I'm pretty sure you don't want to go through the, uh, the box opening. But, hey ho, yeah. There we go. We should have a bit less light there now. That's a bit better, moderately better. So yeah, we are gonna now open the first door and see what's behind it. If I can find number one, which would be a really great start. There it is. That's kind of hard to see. Let's have a look. Ooh. You can see how it looks in there. It's just little. You don't get a foil. I'd like to put in a complaint that you don't get a bit of foil to peel back. But I suppose they'd probably say if you put foil in, people would think it was actually confectionery or something. But yeah, that's part of the fun is push pushing the foil out of the way when you open your advent calendar. So we have for the first one. Is it Naples yellow? I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm going to just show you properly. There we go. So that's the half pan size. And yeah, that is the colour that we've got. There's the view at the side and the number if you're interested. I'm not sure how that's going to come out when it actually goes on the paper, but from the swatch at the side, it looks like it could work for a pale skin tone. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to give that a try. I did say it right. I just wanted to check.
So things ended up getting a little bit crazy over December and I didn't end up recording the opening of any more of these doors. So as you can see, I've opened them all now. We've got this really nice selection of colours in here. I haven't done the 24th yet, so I'll do that in a second. But yeah, I didn't have time to show any more examples or test them out. I only had time to do the first one. So what I'm going to do is just open this one and then I'm going to put them in the palette that I've got. I got this on eBay, but you can get them on other sites as well, like Amazon and other places. This is a Meaden watercolour metal palette, and I saw this on one of Tricky Wagon's videos, and I thought it looked good. I like the colour as well. Um, you can get it in light blue as well, I think. And it's just a metal palette here. It comes with the half pans in it, but obviously I'm going to be taking these out to put these ones in. But it comes in several different sizes as well, so I picked the 24 half pan set. And then I'm just going to be transferring all of these into it and I'm going to be giving these paints a try and seeing what they're like. So on the last day of the calendar you get a full pan instead of a half pan. I think that's pretty neat that you get something different on Christmas Eve. This is the yellow gold colour. I'm not actually sure where I'm going to put it because it's kind of awkward having a bunch of half pans and then one full pan, but I guess I'll figure it out. So for this practice piece with these watercolours, I was originally going to do a little seasonal type drawing of some of my characters, and then I realised it was probably getting a bit too far past Christmas to be doing that, so I just decided to work with this super quick sketch that I did of my original character, Alora. She is a character from Wired who I haven't actually drawn before. Her name is Alora, spelled A-L-O-R-A, -A, just to clarify because some people, when I say it, um, think that her name is Alora, like from Voltron, but no, it's Alora. And she is an engineer who features in Wired. She's a lot of fun and she brings kind of a youthful energy to the story, which is more than some characters do for sure. Heavily side-eyeing Jacob at this point. <laughs> And I really enjoy writing about her. She taught Jacob the concept of the fist bump, which he still doesn't entirely understand, but he humours her. And like I said, I haven't drawn her before. I'm working on getting some full body images of the characters done for the website before I properly start on the comic and just kind of introduce them all to you guys. So it's kind of a steady stream of work at the moment that I'm doing behind the scenes. The paper that I used for this is the Langton watercolour paper, which is cold pressed. I got this in WH Smith for half price, I think it was reduced to £7. I really enjoyed using this one, it's very thick, very textured. It did crease up but I didn't stretch it before I used it so that's why. Now I will preface this by saying that I am not an expert on watercolours by any stretch of the imagination as you probably already know, which means that when I look back at some of my old videos I do have a temptation to pull them all down because I've done some reviews in the past for supplies that I really didn't have the knowledge to be reviewing at that point. And yeah, I'm still learning so much about watercolours and there are so many things that I'm only just figuring out that I feel like I totally wasn't fit to be telling other people what I think of them at that stage. So yeah, there are some videos I look back at and I'm like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about when I'm watching them. But yeah, um, so like I said, I still am definitely not an expert. So this isn't a review. This is just me giving you my first impressions of these paints. But genuinely, I can say for sure that I absolutely loved using these and I think they might actually become my new favourite watercolours. I've been using Winsor & Newton for a long time. They've been my favourites for a while but I did enjoy using these more than those and there are a few factors that contributed to that and generally they just kind of had a lot of ease of use that made them enjoyable and I felt like they were very forgiving. So there was a lot of variation in the opacity of these paints. I was really surprised by how vibrantly they came out if you didn't use a lot of water in comparison to the Winsor & Newton and other brands that I've tried. 
they kind of felt a little bit like the Gansai Tanbi to me, which I know they're not comparable because they're different types of watercolour. The Gansai Tanbi are Japanese watercolours which have a different consistency and they're made of different products. But it kind of felt comparable to that in a way, the way that they lifted off of the palette and laid down on the paper. There was a lot of variation in the opacity, you could really dilute them a lot or you could use them and make them extremely bold. They were very forgiving in terms of if you made a mistake, the paint would lift not entirely, but it would lift off the paper to a good enough degree that you could then dab the excess off and fix it. Whereas with some other brands, I found that it still leaves a watermark of some kind when I've tried that. I got a really nice variation in sharp edges and soft edges. It blended really well and just felt like it laid down so smoothly. And one of the problems that I've had with watercolours is totally my own fault in the past. I'm slowly learning not to do it, but one of the things I used to do was try and make them behave like other media, which is totally pointless because there is no reason to buy a particular tool and then try and make it act like another one. You might as well just stick with the first one. But I was kind of trying to shade with watercolours in the same way that I might shade digitally or with markers or whatever, but it just doesn't work like that and I needed to embrace the way that these tools work in particular. And so that's what I've been trying to do is just be more relaxed with letting the paint flow where it will and trying out the variation in hard and soft edges, which previously sometimes I would try and blend that out. And again, that's something that I'm working on is not over rendering, like especially with my digital media, I'm currently learning how to paint digitally without any lines because I've always relied very heavily on lines. And one of the things that I'm struggling with is over rendering to the point where my characters start to look like they're made of plastic and I don't want to carry that over into my traditional work. I mean, I think it would be more difficult with traditional because you can't blend it out as much as digital, but I'm definitely still learning about keeping that balance between the soft edges and the hard edges in an illustration to maintain visual interest without making it look sort of bland and over rendered. I also tried to kind of keep the detail in this piece to the centre and her face and the hair around her face and then let it kind of blend out into softer edges towards the outside to keep the visual interest in the middle. And composition is again something that I'm still learning and processing and figuring out and I really like the end result on this. I used paintbrushes for the whole thing, I didn't use any fine liners. I used a Kalinsky Sable for the lines on her face, which I got in a bundle deal with some watercolours in the past, but I'm not hugely keen on it, so I'm going to stick with synthetic brushes, I think. I prefer the idea of using synthetic anyway, so I'm looking to invest in some nice quality ones because I seem to have collected a lot of paintbrushes over the years, but not a lot of high quality ones. I seem to have ones that are shedding and just generally are not great to use, so I'm looking to invest in some high quality ones, so thank you to those who gave me suggestions on Twitter. I'm going to look into those and hopefully get some. The flowers around her were meant to be sunflowers, but I don't know what happened at some point in the process. They just kind of drifted off of that idea and now I don't really know what they are, but I'm quite happy with how smooth they look around the edge. Some of them look a little bit fuzzy where I was playing around with the water and kind of dabbing up the excess paint and seeing what happened. So yeah, this piece was totally experimental, but I really enjoyed the process and I'm really happy with the result. The light fastness on these watercolours was pretty high, most of them were a 4 star rating with the exception of the black and the white which had a 5 star rating and I believe it was the orange, I've thrown the packets away now, sorry, um, I think it was the orange that had the 3 star rating but generally they were pretty good. And like I said, they do have a professional range, which I imagine would have a higher light fastness rating. I haven't looked into it yet, but yeah, they have the student range and then they have the professional range like the Windsor and Newton as well. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed using these watercolours. I'm especially pleased that I managed to get them at quite a good price, considering what I found them at since in the sets. So buying them in the advent calendar actually worked out pretty good value. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing the process of this piece coming together. And let me know if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to know. So thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you next time. Bye.